Welcome again to one of our uh, other sessions, actually in the Easter season. And the, I'm going to talk about the uh, last main three uh, stained glass windows, which actually talk a lot about Easter uh, and about um, uh, the, our, uh, our time and our sharing of um, our Lenten season. So the first window, which is on the fourth window, is called One Holy Catholic Nation. Now what's very beautiful about this window is, it's we have beautiful colors again. We have the lamb and we have the tablets of the Ten Commandments. And I want to share a little bit about um, the lamb first. The lamb is a very beautiful unblemished, unblemished lamb. Again, it uh, celebrates the Passover uh, of the people from uh, e Egypt into the Promised Land. And of course, we're going to see in the next couple of windows about uh, Jesus' line from King David. And then also we're going to see uh, the last very important window. And they all like the three windows that we saw on the other side of the church and also the two main windows uh, behind the altar talk about God's covenant with us. So the main thing for this whole church is God with us, Emmanuel, which is Jesus Christ, which means covenant. So again, back to the lamb, the lamb again was the symbol of then of the Passover. So they celebrated the Passover, which celebrates them passing over that God passed over those houses and kept them safe from the killing of the firstborns in Egypt. So we have a beautiful, beautiful white lamb. And what they would do is they would actually do that every year after the, um, when they left Egypt. And we do the same thing every day, every week, every year. We celebrate the Passover of Jesus from life, death to life. So we have the black are the, the two tablets and then the colors behind that. Now again, the tablets are the, where the ways, the precepts, the guide for people to follow in the covenant, to love God, to love neighbor, to love themselves, but with God, always loving them first and always doing the precepts of the commandments so they could follow how to follow the covenant in the best way they could. Now also as well too, with Moses, was, the covenant was also given to the 12 tribes. So if ever you remember, uh, previously in the Old Testament, Joseph and his brothers became the 10, uh, sorry, excuse me, the 12 tribes of Israel. So each brother then became a tribe and the, the families and their families became the tribe. So then actually the covenant but with, not just with Moses and his family, but those 12 tribes of Israel that then scattered throughout the promised land. It was very beautiful as well too. The, the, the covenant's a law. It's a law of love, a law of, of keeping God's covenant uh, rules, uh, guidelines, precepts to try to follow in the way that God wants to lead us by loving, by seeking, and by being one nation. That's why it's called a one holy Catholic nation. Now, under God. Now the colors, uh, the, there's the tan and dark tan and orange. And the main colors here, that are very important. It talks about the color of the desert. When they wandered, when they searched, and when they finally got their own tub nations in the desert. So it talks about their journey from Egypt to a new land. And we're also journeying in our prayer life, in our covenant with God. So that is beautiful um, station of glass, one holy Catholic nation. So now we'll go on to the fifth beautiful station, um, station of glass. And I would really encourage you, just like the stations, just like the crucifix, just like Mary's statue, Teresa's statue, I would get you to come sometime and actually spend some time uh, and looking at the... Um, this, the, uh, the beautiful stained glass and can see what it really means to you. It might, mean, it might help you on your journey of faith. So this one's called One Holy Catholic Kingdom. So now we follow along the life journey, the faith journey of our faith. And of course, we, um, and the uh, Easter Vigil, uh, we talked about David and David's line and who becomes Jesus Christ born in uh, Bethlehem. So the symbol here is the crown and the lyre. The lyre was a music for the Lord, music for the king, 
and for the kingdom of God. And that's why it's called one holy Catholic kingdom that we belong to, the crown and the lyre. Now, uh, the crown of King David was given to him because the people, he strayed again, they wanted to be kings, they wanted to be queens. David was a follower of the covenant until he struggled, he sinned, he made mistakes, and then he fell uh, into greater um, um, sin, but he was still one who was chosen by God to be a king, to be a mediator. So a king was a mediator of the covenant. And now we have Christ the King, which we celebrated uh, Easter Sunday. And also our cathedral in Hamilton is called Christ the King. So Christ is the King of Kings. So he wears the crown of humility, not like King David, but again, as a kingdom and as a nation, the nation then grows. The nation grows and it even goes out farther into the normal world at that time. And of course, the growth comes then through Jesus Christ. Now, the purple, there's all different hues of purple. Well, four hues of purple. Purple, we know, in the beginning of time, any great leader or great king or great ambassador uh, always wears purple. It's a royal color. It's a very old, old color that's used. Because the different hues of purple talk about um, uh, David, but also about Jesus. And that's why, for example, even though we use white uh, for a funeral, white for a baptism, white for Easter, white and gold, you see in our church, there's still purple. So seeing that Christ the King, Jesus, who lived, died, and rose for us, that purple and rose and other colors are still very evident throughout the church, reminding us, again, on the two large ones behind the altar, that God, uh, royal king, uh, who was became a, ser a slave, a servant, is one who loves us very much. And so again, from, from the first king to David, to Jesus, uh, to us, we are um, to be part of his kingdom, especially in the baptismal rite. We say that we are pre priest, prophet, and king, or queen. We are, peace, pe we are priest, prophet, and we're king. We're, we're part of Jesus' kingdom. We're all part of Jesus' kingdom. So that purple is very, very important. Though so we wear purple vestments in Advent and Lent. So now we'll go to the last beautiful uh, stained glass piece, which is the, now we come sixth. To the last beautiful stained glass station. And this one, this one's called, which is the we, we celebrate actually in the Creed every every Mass on the Nicene Creed that we are one holy Catholic Church. Now this beautiful one has a symbol of the chalice, the grapes, the host, and the wheat. Now the wheat is yellow, and there's yellow strands again. And I'll talk about that at the end about the yellow strands. So this beautiful um, stained glass talks about that through this picture and through uh, the Holy Catholic Universal One Church, which is, which is all churches, not just Catholic churches, that it's the new and everlasting. So by through Jesus and his living through the Eucharist and being the Eucharist, that is everlasting because we have Jesus in the Eucharist and also in our faith, in our prayer, forever and forever. Because we are, our, we are God's family. So this, even though it talks about the Eucharist, the whole symbol says to us, that when, we, when we believe in Jesus Christ in faith, in the creed, and also in his life, death and resurrection, and, and in, the, in the Eucharist. Well, we actually were taking in, we actually were eating, we are consuming, we're taking in Jesus Christ in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And then we know that Jesus Christ, which is symbolized here in the beautiful uh, Eucharist, that Jesus is the perfect covenant. So that's why we have Jesus to pray to. He intercedes for us. He mediates for us. He is our friend and our defender. So he is the perfect covenant uh, in our life. And we're so thankful for that. Again, again, the sign of the, the Passover, which again, but had food and they celebrated uh, God saving their lives in Egypt. And now we see that God saves us through Jesus Christ. And that's why we have the beautiful, the grapes, the wheat, the chalice, and the host, 
which saves us. And Jesus is our body and blood. He becomes body and blood and dies and sacrifices himself and gives us the covenant through the Eucharist. Now, again, the yellow colors. Now, it's been quite a long time since I um, talked about the yellow color. The white colors in um, parts of these windows, but in the main two windows, is the covenant, which is always there for us. And then the yellow, which go out, 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 that's Jesus Christ and his beams of love, light, and protection. And those beams on all the six windows. And actually right now, I'm, 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 I'm taping this, actually on the other side of the church, uh, and Jeff and I are doing this, actually the yellow is really coming through. Uh, on the, uh, the, the sun's coming through in the church right now, and it's really showing the yellow coming through on the windows on the number one, two, and three. And they're quite, you've actually quite seen that I'm just going to show you the camera now that the yellow is beautifully coming through the most probably vibrantly because it's a bright goldy yellow color. Again, that's Jesus Christ, whose life and life and protection can never be snuffed out. That that bright light of yellow is so very, very important. It's very, very beautiful. Now the color back on this one, and you'll see that in the picture, the main color here also is red. Now red, of course, talks about the blood of Christ, that the life of Christ, the blood of Christ, actually in, in theology, but it also in our life of faith, the blood of Christ washes away our sins. So the white, the, the water at our baptism makes a, a new birth by water in the, in the, by water of the Holy Spirit. And of course, we just celebrated uh, in the mass last weekend that by the water and the blood, we are saved with the water of life and the blood of death we are then, we are, are of the covenant forever and ever, and that we are called to renew our daily, um, we, we, we wake up in the morning and we say, let me be part of the new covenant. Let me, um, through the sacrament of the Eucharist, through the sacrament of life and faith, and just getting up in the morning, let me renew myself to the covenant every day. Is it, is, is it easy? It's fun? No, it's not. But God calls us to be open and to keep renewing ourselves in our baptism, in the covenant, of blood through Jesus Christ. It sounds kind of harsh, but the red just symbolizes the blood of God given to us for eternity. So again, the windows are very beautiful. Again, the yellow rays come through all the, all the windows, meaning God's love and God through Jesus will always be in our hearts, always in our faith, and always in our life. God will always be prodding us and finding us and coming to see us and trying to be in our life. Even if we turn away, God will always be there. So again, these windows symbolizes God's love for us and God's commitment for us in God's covenant. May God bless you all.